This is Neville Rag presenting a special with Jack Foran as my co-compere. This program is a birthday tribute to a very charming, unassuming gentleman who is a household name associated with broadcasting and recording of light and dance music over many years. Happy January the 4th, Mr. Sidney Lipton. bright arrangement there by Bert Reed with the Sydney Lipton Orchestra of Down on the Delta and the vocalist Sam Brown. One of the top combinations of the golden age of the British dance bands was at the Grosvenor House Hotel where tall, dark, handsome Sydney Lipton, their leader for an all-time record period, bore himself as befitting such an establishment with the dignity of a black rod. So let's hear them in a very bright arrangement of Hey Young Fella.
Better close your old umbrella Have a glorious day, throw your cares away Cause it ain't gonna rain no more Stay young fella Put your raincoat in the cellar While you're tying your tie Take a look at the sky Well it ain't gonna rain no more Look at that brave little rainbow Hide in the clouds above I'm in the ring, Mr. Rainbow, with a horseshoe in my glove. Hey, young fella, better close your old umbrella. Give your pants a hitch, cause we're gonna be rich and it ain't gonna rain no more. Hey, young fella, put away your umbrella. Have a glorious day, throw your cares away, cause it ain't gonna rain no more. Say, young fella, put your raincoat in the cellar. While you're tying your tie, take a look at the sky, well, it ain't gonna rain no more. Look at that brave little rainbow Fighting those clouds up above I'm in the ring, Mr. Rainbow With a whole shoe in my glove Hey, young fella Better close your old umbrella Give your pants a hitch Cause we're gonna be rich And it ain't gonna rain no more A young fellow with Nat Canella shoeing the vocal with Jack Plant, preceded by, for you, Just You, My Baby, and the vocal by Les Allen. May we go back to the, be the very beginning. I know that you're still a violinist. Now, was it because you wanted to play the violin that you took this instrument up, or was it because your parents wanted a violinist in the family? Um. We, we had no professional musicians or, or even amateur musicians in the family, but the family were always interested in music and I was taken to numbers of concerts and I sort of grew up with a, a, a feeling for music. And eventually one day my oldest brother, he was the oldest and I was the youngest, my oldest brother brought a violin and said, uh, how would you like to play that? And from then I went to a teacher and then I went from one teacher to another, progressively. And this is how you became a dance band leader. That's how as simple I became, as that. Just as simple as that.
Sydney Lipton and his Gravener House Band. I'm playing with fire. I think your first professional engagement uh, was in Edinburgh. Uh, well, no, not quite. No, I had uh, various engagements before that. I, I even played, my, uh, I hesitate to tell you, but I even played in the silent cinema. And I played in theatres, in the pit, uh, in the pit orchestras with theatres. Um, but virtually, I mean, the, the first really important engagement was at the Palladie Dance, um, Edinburgh. Oh, that's a, a ballroom. Oh, yes, the ballroom. Perhaps it was at the Palais de Dance that Sidney Lipton first encountered Sadie the Shaker. Graduated to the top West End bands. Uh, yes, by, by, by stages, yes. Um, uh, from there, we went down to uh, to Brighton. We had a little, it was a five piece or six piece, six piece band. And we went down to Brighton, and there I met uh, Bill Cotton, who had the other band. Mm -hmm. Bill, of course, you know that name. Yes, well. Yes, well. Uh, great character. I, I met Bill Cotton, we became very friendly, and um, though he was. Uh, uh, older than I was and uh, off he went from there to Southport and before he left he said to me now you will join me as and when you can and that's what I did I joined him at Southport and became his leader in his first first band the first band he ha ever had that's interesting uh, big band and at Sydney Lipton's violin we hear in Billy Cotton's version of Hello Beautiful recorded on the 25th of March 1931 
You also play with some other uh, top line bands, I think, at some stages of various oh, purposes. Oh, well, you, you mentioned, I, I think I recorded with most of them, um, uh, including Ambrose, who, who uh, was a great inspiration to me as a musician because yeah. I think his band was absolutely terrific. Um, I learned so much with him. Um, well, you mentioned the band, um, I, I recorded with them. Yeah. Well, that's a simple answer. Now, your own first band of some size, uh, according to some writers, that's in 1927. Um, no, it's rather rather late. It was rather later than that. In 27, I think I was still with Bill Cotton. But I happen to know have a good idea of the date because in 29, 1929, I went across to Paris with Bill Cotton, and um, ha had a marvelous time. There was I discovered some French relatives and started to learn to speak French. Uh, and um, so that it must have been round about 30 or 31 when I had my own band. And that was at the, um, the then Empress Rooms, which was the dance venue in, in London, um, on the site of which today there's the Royal Garden Hotel, to which I, I, oh, um, yes. I, I supply bands and so on. So it's with the Royal Strings that we next hear Sidney Lipton in the well-known traditional Chialito Lindo. <laughs>
The Royal Strings, directed by Sidney Lipton with Chialito Lindo. And so we return to Steinway Hall. How many would have been in that original band? Do you remember? Uh, I think we had about six or seven uh, uh, musicians in it. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the other band was a very famous, a man who became a very famous cabaret artist, um, Hutch. Yeah, Wesley uh, Hutchison. Wesley Hutchison, yes. Um, but he was known as Hutch, and he was the man with the handkerchief. He was always mopping his brow with a handkerchief. But he yeah. was, uh, uh, had an excellent voice, lovely voice, and a very good speaking voice. You know? I believe Jesse Matthews and Sonny Hale had something to do with him coming in, into being as a solo act. I, I hadn't heard this, but he was oh. a very, very good and a tremendously popular solo act. Oh, very good. Now, let's move on now to the famous band, the, the Grosvenor House Hotel in Park Lane. Now, uh, that was about July 1932, again, I think, from research. I, I think that's about right, yes. Good. Yes. Now, can you remember... They're, ju they're just is issued from records of mine, which were made around about that date. I think you heard yes, them. yes, I, no, no, have yeah. I heard them, but yeah. I've got them. Yeah. Oh, you have? Oh, yes. Yeah, when I heard about this, I was very worried about it, but when I actually heard them, uh, they, they were... I, I, I wasn't dissatisfied. No source for worry, I can assure you. In fact, each time I hear them, they sound more beautiful than ever. More Beautiful Than Ever, sung by Les Allen with the Gravener House Band, recorded more than 46 years ago. Can you recall, without going to the records, Lees, what was the composition of uh, your original band in the, at Gravener House? Uh, well, it, the original band, oh gosh. Um, roughly. Roughly, um, I'm just trying to think. I honestly, off, offhand, I couldn't say. Well, according to the Brian Rust discography, it was three brass, three reeds, conventional four rhythm, and yourself. Would that be right? That's right. Uh, from there, oh, I want to ask you, when you were there, did you lead the band with a baton at all times, or did you sometimes play with them, or 
Uh, oh, well, well, you I, fronted the bow in, yes, in what well, manner? I, I always had a fiddle and a bow in my hand, and yes. I played from time to time, and then sort of flourished with a bow, you know. So, yes. pepper and salt, a little bit of each. That's, that's the idea. And by the way of contrast, we'll hear and enjoy Sam Brown's vocal as he sings with the Grosvenor House Hotel Band, Masquerade. I know that Max Goldberg, Max is a friend of ours. Oh dear, dear Max, yes. Yes, yes. well he's still alive. And well, well, I was delighted to hear from you that uh, he, he's still around in, uh, uh, in Melbourne. Yes. And um, I, I hope that you'll convey my kind regards to him. We certainly uh, will. Tell him I, I remember him with affection. Yes. And um, I, as I say, I'm delighted to hear he's with us. Well, I'm sure that he'll be listening to the program, so he'll he hear that message for himself. Well, apart from Max Goldberg, he told me that Ted Heath was with you. That's right. Now, who are some of the other top line musicians? You uh, of course, Max and Ted came to me from, from the Ambrose Band. Oh, uh, yes. yes. Uh, in, in regard to Ted, it was um, he was available because um, I think Ambrose had to make a choice between him and Ted playing the trombone with the, uh, another trombone player, and he made the choice, which was made in the, uh, the, the toss of a coin, I think. In fact, I probably precipitated it by uh, asking Ted to join me, and of course, Max, I asked Max at the same time, which was a tremendous uh, uh, thing for my band. Mm.
is everywhere Its music fills the air All nature seems to hum A melody from the sky Over on the hill I see a whip or will I hear his song become a melody Bluebird singing to his lady love above the love song taken from the whispering breeze in the trees. Love is everywhere, its music fills the air. All nature seems to hum a melody from. his band of 1936, Sidney Lipton playing a melody from the sky. And I know that uh, Max Goldberg and Betty are listening and Max was playing some fine trumpet there. So greetings to the Goldbergs. This is the period you did Robins and Roses. In fact, it's a good double cider and probably my favourite Lipton recording. Well, here's uh, Sidney Lipton once again with Robins and Roses.
sighing with a sigh that you no longer care. The breeze and I are whispering goodbye to dreams we used to share. Ours was a love song that seemed constant as the moon, ending in a strange, mournful tune. And all about me, they know you have departed without me, and we wonder why the breeze and I, the breeze and I. Breeze and I, a very lovely arrangement. Let's see, that'd be uh, Billy Munn? Oh, Bill, yes, Bill, the great pianist. Of course, he came from Jack Hilton, a great character. Yes. A great, great player. He's still playing. Yes, I know he's down at uh, Torquay. He's the musical director of the Imperial Torquay. If, if you wander down there, you'll find him there. A bit late to get down there now, but Tiny's been down there at Paints. Oh, Tiny, yes. Oh, yes. And uh, yeah. Tiny Winters told me that he had yeah. a very pleasant afternoon yeah. having yeah. a reminiscing period yes. uh, with Billy Munn. Well, the last time I was down, uh, I was down in Tokyo some years ago, uh, believe it or not, Bill and I, we spent the whole night playing violin concertos and, and sonatas, literally the whole night. A little away from dance band oh, music. Uh, yes, right away from it, but we, we, variety is the spice of life. And just to prove the point, here is Sidney Lipton playing a violin concerto with piano accompaniment. some of the other musicians around those days that you didn't work with you or for you that perhaps you would like to have had at some stage, um, do you think? Joe Grossman comes to mind because he was a, a sex lovely yes. saxophonist. He was with Ambrose. Um, and then to Lou Stone. Yes. Uh, there was a, I, I must remember there was a, a trumpet player, Chelsea Queeley, an American yes. trumpet player who worked with Ambrose. A great, uh, And I think he also worked with Ella Zaldi. Of course, I yeah. record it with Ellis Aldi from time to time, too. Mm -hmm. um, Lou Stone, of course, there was uh, 
uh, Joe Ferry, who played the trombone with the Bill Cotton band. Mm -hmm. There was Sid Buckman, who played the uh, the trumpet, came from the, the Bill Cotton band. Um, there was a Harry Burley, who played fiddle, he played uh, viola and sax. Yes. A lovely musician. Yes. Had an unfortunate death. He fell in front of a tube train, poor chap. That's right. Yes. But one of the people I remember in that time, um, not the Rousseau band, but one of the great, great players was um, Adrian Rolini, oh, who played yeah. bass and vibraphone. What a, what a marvellous yeah. player that man was. I was waiting for you to mention yeah. him because yes. earlier, before we started to tape, yeah. you had, yeah. and yeah. that was behind yeah. my question, really. Yes. Um, Some great names there. Oh, but uh, Rolini was an inspiration to us all, I think. Oh, beaut. Uh, now, thinking of your own bands again, uh, which of your own bands now, this may be an unfair question because undoubtedly they're all excellent they're, bands. Oh yes, yes. But which, like, there must be something about some one of them combinations that you feel was the best. Now, which would you term was the best band you had? It's a, it's a difficult question to answer in yes. a way. But um, since you've asked it, I would say that the band I had in 1939, before the war started, uh, right up to the time of the war. What about the Decca session on the 13th of January 1938, when you cut eight sides? all except one of which were first takes. Um, on that particular session, which I remember very well because it was one of the most successful sessions we ever had, um, we, we recorded, as usual, about eight, eight numbers, and uh, we were there all day. But among those numbers um, were some uh, compositions by Raymond Scott, uh, including Reckless Night on Board an Ocean Liner, uh, dinner music for uh, Hungry Cannibals, uh, the, whole, the whole session is very vivid because it was so so good and so successful. You know, um, I had a uh, subsequent day. I had a cable from uh, Raymond Scott to say how much um, uh, he enjoyed the recordings, and which I appreciated very much. Unfortunately, I never got the benefit of it in the United States because they never put out any of our records, any of the British records, except for Ray uh, Noble, who really was working in the States uh, at that time. Uh, yes. They, uh, they never put out any British records, so I never really, uh, none of us ever got the, uh, the benefit of that. From the session in question, we have the fascinating Sid Phillips arrangement of Amoresque, followed by It's a Long, Long Way to Your Heart, with vocal by Al Bowley.
It's a long, long way to your heart But I'm gonna get there So you better beware It's a long, long way to your arms Though you keep me away I'll be having my day I knew you were mine the very first time I met you You'd better unbend because in the end I'll get you It's a long, long way to your heart But I'm gonna get there And when I get there I'll be there a long, long It's a long, long way to your heart But I'm gonna get there And when I get there I'll be there a long, long Is it true that at one stage you dispensed with a guitarist in your band and replaced him uh, with a third trumpet? Uh. We replaced him with a flugel horn, in, in point a, of fact. A flugel horn. But uh, the, the, the change was, I regretted very much, because we had a, a really fine guitarist, um, Jack Llewellyn, who's still around teaching today, but a really uh, acknowledged, a, a great exponent in the guitar. But unfortunately, the reason for the change was that, unfortunately, we, uh, the, the guitar then was an acoustic instrument, mm -hmm. and uh, whereas today it's probably the loudest um, uh, instrument in the band. I could think of in another the, word. In yes. those days, you could hardly you could hardly hear it. It was very very subtle. But Jack was a great player. But I, I regretfully changed over because it was just wasted. All his his artistry was wasted. So over we went to uh, not to a third trumpet but a flugel horn. And what? Why the flugel horn? Was well, there a reason uh, behind your choice? Yes, it was. Yes, it was an innovation in those days. But yeah. I felt that the flugel was was a sort of a bridge between the trombone and the trumpet, ah. and it worked very well. It was a wider sort of sound, yeah. a, a bigger sort of. A different sound um, and uh, it, it bridged the two and it was very successful well this worried me yeah. since i read it because i yeah. i have been able to pick it up now I'll, I'll listen more attentively and perhaps i may be well, able you'd, to you'd find it very difficult to pick up because uh, these re recordings then were compared today of course uh, primitive they were relatively right. primitive yes and uh, i i doubt whether you could um uh, pick pick out that particular instrument. Mm. It would blend with the trumpets and the trombones. Uh, it, it would almost sound like a trumpet on, on those recordings. Today, of course, it would be different. This brings us to Old Bowley, of course. Oh, you would have known Old Bowley too. I knew him very well. Of course, as you may know, he, he recorded a number yeah. of things with us. That's right. Yes, oh, yes I knew Old Bowley. Well. How'd you find him? A very, very pleasant chap. I never had any bother with him at all. He came in and he smiled throughout his uh, the recording session or whenever he was with us. Uh, perfectly all right. He never, never sang with you in public? Uh, no, I don't think, no, he ever did. It was always no. on, on, on records. Yes, only at, at yeah. uh, recording date. Yeah. Speaking of vocalists, something unusual about your band was that you had your daughter, Celia, singing with you as the vocalist. Uh, was this purely parental pride? No, this wasn't my idea at all. Uh, Celia, even as a child, she was always keen about going on stage, and obviously she was going in that direction. And she had ballet lessons and uh, dancing and... Uh, and the piano and singing and all the rest of it as time went on. But eventually, at one stage, she got in touch with a, a, a rival, if I call him that, a band leader, Jack Harris. Oh, yeah, he yes. He I think he was connected with Ambrose in some way, wasn't he? Well, he, yes, he yeah, went yeah. along with Ambrose. Yes. When Jack got through to me and said, your daughter's been in touch with me, you've seen her's been in touch with me, and she wants to sing with the band. We've heard her sing, and we'd like to have her in the band. So, of course, that, that, that <laughs> prompted me to say, well, if he's going to sing with anybody, he's going to sing with me, where I can keep my parental, as you call it, my yeah. parental eye on her. Oh, good. And that's how she sang with my band for a time, until she went off on her own. She, uh, yeah. she went on the stage as, a, as a, a solo artist and an actor. Well, we've mentioned Celia, Billy Munn, and Sid has nominated the band, so let's put them all together with Celia singing with her father's band, the Billy Munn arrangement of Why Does My Heart Go Boom?
One of the few top band leaders to join the forces, Sid Lipton enlisted in the Royal Signal Corps in March 1941, so Celia was no longer working for Dad when she suggests wrap yourself in cotton wool. I'm not a qualified doctor, got no prescription to sign, but I'm going to take good care of you, because you're all fine. I know you have a lumbago, and that you don't suffer from gout, but I'm going to give some orders to you, and you're going to carry them out. Take an apple every day, Doctor man away, wrap yourself in cotton wool and save yourself for me. Where your wool is when you're told, see that you don't catch a cold. Wrap yourself in cotton wool and save yourself for me. No wonder that I worry, cause you mean a lot to me. So see that you get plenty of fun. 
away your corned beef when you're told. See that you don't catch a cold. Wrap yourself in cotton wool and save yourself for me. No wonder that I worry, cause you mean a lot to me. So see that you get plenty of vitamins A, B, C, and D. One more thing before we part. Please be careful of your heart. Wrap yourself in cotton wool and save yourself. The obvious question, um, do you ever lead a band now these days at the Grosvenor House Hotel? Well, I, I lead a band at the Grosvenor House Hotel from time to time. There's no resident band at the Grosvenor no, House. No, I know that. That. Became, that became too expensive, I suppose, and, and that, that, that was out. How long ago would that have been, do you think, roughly? Very roughly, off the top of my head, so to speak. Uh, I think about 1950, 52, something oh, I like see. that, yes. But they still have the big band there on occasion. Well, oh yes, for the various big functions that take place, oh. and, um, some of the functions from Australia. Obviously you're still connected with the musical scene, now, what do you do these days? Well, I, I lead a sort of Jekyll and Hyde life, I, I have this uh, agency and uh, we're kept very busy, so I, in the daytime I, I'm an administrator in the agency, or managing director, what you want to call me. The, and uh, at night I, I change and I become a musician when, when it's uh, necessary. Be very interesting. Uh, but I'm basically, basically, I hope I am a musician. I think you are. Uh, oh, yes. May I say how, how delighted I am to, uh, to be on this program? And uh, may I say once again, my friends in, in Melbourne who may be listening, my kindest regards, including, of course, uh, Manx. Good. Thank you and good boy. But in thanking Mr. Sidney Lipton, I must add that in my view, he is a particularly nice and an exceptionally understanding gentleman. At short notice, he made arrangements for me to visit him for the original interview. When Sid's secretary told him I had inadvertently wiped it off my tape, he rescheduled his appointments and made it possible to record our chat for the second time. Not many busy executives would do that. The combination, no wonder we're in love. She has charms, a perfect taste. I have arms that fit her waist. What a perfect combination, no wonder we're in love. She taught me one thing, love is only what you make it. And I know one thing, she can dish it out and I can take it. We both want a family. I want twins and so does she. What a perfect combination, no wonder we're in love. My thanks to Sidney Lipton for making this program possible and to Mangan Ryan for his assistance and patience. The entire program was arranged and written by Jack Foran. The original recordings are from his own collection. Mm -hmm.